In China, uh, we follow the NMPA. We do handle a lot of vaccine trials. Approvals can be a bit longer compared to Europe. So those are, are very good systems that will help you comply with EMEA regulations or even China regulations. Hello and welcome to the Industry Voice podcast series. Today I'm interviewing the representative of Chinese innovative vaccine company RegBio. We will be discussing the current tendencies in project management and industry-specific technologies in China and around the world. Please welcome Philip James, project director at RegBio. Hello, Philip. Nice to have you here. Hi, thank you, Polina, for having us today. And my first question to you would be, what is it like being a project director at Innovative Vaccine Company? Great. So as a project director, I'd like to share with you some of my responsibilities first. What I usually do is, is I lead the strategies of, of the studies we are managing. And uh, I monitor the progress as well and the delivery of the project. In a small biotech, usually uh, the people are limited. And uh, what we do is we really do uh, beyond our job description. So it's, it's really exhilarating and exciting day by day looking at its progress. And, and I feel that every work that I do really has an effect to the development of those studies. Thank you. It's very interesting. We are living in extremely turbulent times. What project management approaches are the most salient during times of crisis? Great question. I think the most important is, is to really adapt agile methodologies, such as uh, being able to mitigate risk immediately. So at this time, there's so many things that could happen, such as delays and deliveries of investigational drugs, as an example. So as a project manager, as a project director, you really have to think of innovative ways, do a lot of planning. And uh, in terms of communication, uh, we were very limited to virtual meetings, uh, it takes some of the time, so it, it would be very good to really plan those meetings, make it effective, and communication with partners like CROs, like OCT, we have really developed uh, a very effective way of, of communicating. Okay, thank you. And um, uh, today, um, project teams are becoming more globally and culturally diverse and uh, do have an awareness of differences in project management practices across the borders. Uh, what are main peculiarities of doing business in China and Europe, for example? I probably start with, with the differences. Sure. Um, in, in EU and Europe, uh, it's, it's a little bit faster to get approvals, to, to get things going because of the guidelines, the very, the guidelines are quite clear, and everybody can just go to the internet and look at those guidelines. However, it's a little bit stricter in terms of of requirements like data privacy, uh, requirement for a data privacy officer, and uh, European regulations are very strict with with IT systems, which will translate to more resources required. Um, in China, we follow uh, the NMPA guidelines and the CDE guidelines. Approvals can be a bit longer compared to Europe. In terms of, of running trials there, it's, it's, uh, we take a lot of time to build rapport with investigator sites. Mm -hmm. So in terms of, of project management, particularly it's the same. You can translate your, your skills to, to doing trials on both in both regions and I think in the future there would be really a connection and, and uh, a group effort with these two regions to have more studies in the future. Great. Our new reality is far more tech driven. What new approaches, digital tools or best practices observed over the last couple of years can you name that are critical today? 
and how do they help to improve your work strategies and performance? Great. Uh, in terms of project management, there's a lot of, of uh, innovation uh, in the past few years, like uh, use of commercial off-the-shelf system systems like Microsoft Project, uh, seat clinical trial management system, and uh, electronic quality management system. So those are, are very good systems that will help you comply with, with EMEA regulations or even China regulations. Um, in terms of running clinical trials, I would see that systems like uh, electronic patient reported outcome systems uh, will now be very uh, salient and important for, for running trials because those devices, those patient reported outcome devices like iPads, mm -hmm. iPhones, or smartphones will really ensure data integrity. Um, for example, in, in, in a trial with 10,000 subjects, if you use an electronic diary electronic or a tablet, you will ultimately or you would immediately be able to have data integrity there and will save a lot of time. So I think in the future, more and more of, of these types of, of devices would be adopted into trials. And uh, what are reg bias criteria for selecting a CRO when you outsource one? We do a lot of due diligence when, when we select a CRO. It's very important for us to look at the credibility and the experience of, of, of a CRO. Also very important for us would be the resources of that CRO um, because we really need to deliver the studies quickly because it's a back, we do handle a lot of vaccine trials. I think that that's uh, mostly our criteria. And we also consider the cost of, of the CRO if it will beat our criteria. And my last question for today would be about different trends in healthcare. From your perspective, what will become a trend in upcoming years? Not exactly a trend, but it has been going on for a while, but the decentralized trials um, mm -hmm. could, could grow further because uh, of, of emerging diseases, infectious diseases. And the tools that I've, I've said a while ago will, will, be, will grow further, like the use of even electronic consents are being done in Europe and in US. The second thing would be in terms of therapeutic uh, growth or trend, uh, I would say that vaccines will continue to, to grow further. Right now, we're, we're, there's so many oncology or cancer vaccines mm -hmm that would probably further develop both from Europe and in China biotech companies. Great, Philip, thank you so much for your time. It was a pleasure to have you here. Thank you. Uh, thank you for having us. Thank you. Thank you for watching. If you would like to be our next guest speaker, reach out. You can find the right email in the comment section below. And don't forget to subscribe.